Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year, Week 21, Ezra 1 through 10, and Nehemiah 1 through 9, from Restoration to Confession. In Ezra 1, can a polytheistic king, as archaeology testifies of Cyrus, be God's instrument for good? Can modern national leaders also give lip service to God for political reasons? Like Cyrus served God and other gods, can we be guilty of serving God and other gods? Shezbazer is another name for Zerubbabel. In Ezra 2, we notice that Judea was no longer a kingdom, but a mere province of Persia. How complicated would the resettlement of old towns have been when they were already occupied? In Ezra 3, what annual festival dominates the Hebrew seventh month? To what part of our calendar does it correspond? Why were there shouts of joy and sorrow mixed when the foundation of the restored temple was being laid? In Ezra 4, how was the rebuilding frustrated by Israel's enemies? How have church plans sometimes been frustrated by the enemy? What opposition ought we expect to revival? In Ezra 5, what faith did the people have after Haggai and Zechariah prophesied? How wise was their answer to Darius I? In Ezra 6, when God is ready, how surprising and suddenly can things happen? Can God accomplish His work through unbelievers? Because civil authority is given to the church, does that necessarily mean that authority is Christian? During the Babylonian captivity, Aramaic became the language of the Hebrews, and they adopted its square script. Ezra 4 verse 8 through 6 verse 18 were originally written in Aramaic. As Passover is celebrated, the writer switches back to Hebrew. What earlier release from captivity does Passover remind us of? In Ezra 7, Artaxerxes, the Ahasuerus of Esther, becomes king of Persia, and Ezra comes to Jerusalem with the second wave of returnees. How did God give Ezra favor? Can God give us such favor to fulfill his purposes? In Ezra 8, how important was a fast in preparing to serve God? Did Jesus do something similar? What example did the Levites set when asked to serve? In Ezra 9, why was interfaith marriage such a big sin? Is there a balance between this and welcoming the foreigner that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 25? In Ezra 10, how important is confession of sin? Could these spouses have converted and saved their marriages? Was there a law allowing this? How could this apply to Christians in principle? In Nehemiah 1, when Nehemiah heard how badly things were going in Jerusalem for the returnees, he wept and prayed to Yahweh, the true God of heaven, not the Persian counterfeit by that same title. Have you ever been surrounded by unbelievers, heard criticism of the church, and felt like you wanted to weep and pray? In Nehemiah 2, Nisan is likely Babylonian for Abib, the month of Passover. Nehemiah's prayer was answered. How was Artaxerxes Longimanus, son of Xerxes, an answer to his prayer? In Nehemiah 3, How is rebuilding Jerusalem's walls similar to rebuilding the church? How important that everyone, civil officials, goldsmiths, perfumers, ministers, gatekeepers, and merchants do their part? In Nehemiah 4, how does Sanballat's anger and mocking compare to what sometimes happens to churches? How important is a spiritual watch over a church? checking for attitudes and other symptoms of spiritual attacks. In Nehemiah 5, how does usury create slavery in a society? How is the buying and selling of mortgage contracts like selling people? Is the rich oppressing the poor one cause of our national problems today? 
How is Nehemiah not taxing the people, but paying his expenses out of his own resources and example? In Nehemiah 6, how are the plots to trap or frighten, like church plots you may have experienced? In Nehemiah 7, how important is appointing faithful guards to watch and protect the church? What kind of attacks must they watch against? In Nehemiah 8, we have an early ministry of the Word. How powerful was God's Word to them? How powerful is it to us? How important is commentary giving an explanation in addition to reading the Scriptures? See verse 8. What did they do when they discovered the command to observe the Feast of Tabernacles? In Nehemiah 9, is there a time for the church to be set apart from the world today? How important is confession during such a time of separateness? How important are praise in remembering God's great acts and remembering our covenant with God? Well, that's it for this time. Until next time, God bless you.